I am Andrew Haley. I am one of the uh, at-large community members of the governing board, along with Doug Lee, who is uh, watching uh, online. Over to you, Doug. So I can barely hear you. Can you talk into something that, that the, the, the laptop mic can hear? Oh, okay. Is that better? That's much better. Okay, fair enough. Okay, well, I was just saying that I'm Andrew Haley. I am one of the two uh, community at-large governing board members along with you. And this is your cue to introduce yourself. <laughs> um, I don't know what Mark is doing to me right now. <laughs> you, you, you should be good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Doug Lee. Um, I... Are you? Did you ask me to say anything? Yeah, and I just 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 say your name. I think we're done. Okay. Um, right. This is always a little bit. I'm I'm the light entertainment of this panel, because um, I can barely hear you and you can barely see me. Oh well. <laughs> we we can see you quite well, Doug. Actually. Um, I could even, ooh, that'd be scary. Hi, my name is Mark Reinhold. I'm not going to blather. And uh, I'm Steve Wallen, IBM. Uh, I'm replacing John Dumovich, who's unfortunately ill today. So I'm the silent partner from IBM on the OpenJDK, but obviously I've got a voice today. So, so this is a Q&A. Hey. Any, any Q &A? Oh, wait. Oh, George. Uh, I'll just say quickly. George is here, too. I'm here, too. Uh, yeah, I'm the... Uh, the chairperson of this, uh, this uh, illustrious group, and uh, really wish I could be there with you. I'm sorry, um, personal circumstances uh, made it impossible this year. But uh, I, I know how much fun you're having, so uh, it makes me very jealous. Uh, and I'm going to turn off video because my connection is so crap that otherwise uh, you won't be able to hear me and vice versa. OK, George, you're the chair. Run the meeting. Awesome. So I'd like to, uh, as the first point, delegate to Mark. <laughs> Good thing you're not actually my boss. Um, okay, so this is, as I was saying, this is a Q&A. Uh, any questions? Mr. Marble. I, I can't bring you the mic. The mic is, is an incredibly delicate beast. You, why, why don't you jump over? Well, let me take the question. Okay. The question, well, first of all, sorry that George could not be with us because my annual tradition is to troll George and ask him to liberate the proprietary bits of OpenJDK, and they've been liberated, so I can't do that. Sorry, Tom. So, so, so Tom, Tom, Tom is, is very sad that he cannot troll George as he annually has for many years about the closed components of the JDK. Uh, and I'm so, so sad not to be trolled. <laughs> Did you actually have a question? That was, that was a comment. All right. Anybody have an actual question? All right. If we want to get past that, I, I think I'll try to start with something that is, is something um, I wanted to make sure I talked about um, before it ends. Might as well start with it. Um, when we formed the, the governing board, um, a few of us had a laundry list of major major initiatives that needed to get done. And they are slowly, finally, four years later, coming to an end. We have some sort of mechanism for, for um, all of the things that were proprietary Oracle processes. Um, some of them are just barely going, like the, um, like the, the test repo. Some of them have been um, going on for years. Um, the, the last year, we created the, um, the CCC replacement, CSR, which is um, really boring but important. Um, the vulnerability group is finally out of legal and might actually happen sometime soon. I don't um, yeah, I'm, right. All, all of these, though, were our big 
the, you know, our, my bullet points whenever we had discussions about where should we be going. And, you know, I'm actually okay with being um, designated into boring sustainability mode for the GB, but I would like to make sure other people we are that agree that we are in the boring sustainability mode for GB. So if people have ideas of things that they think we should be focusing on and debating and, and annoying the Oracle folks until they comply, um, let me know. Gee, thanks, Doug. Okay, well, can, can I make a, a suggestion? If, if this, I think it would, this would be much more authentic if people did come down and actually use your own voice to ask your question, because when we repeat it, we inevitably miss things. Oh, oh but, but of course, if, if, if I have to repeat it, I can edit as I go. So I have a suggestion. Can we perhaps enter in the FOSS demo 12 times a year? That would be really great, because like in the weeks before FOSS dem, there's always so much, so many, uh, so much happening. If we could have that two, 12 times a year, that would be really great. So do you remember what I, what I was saying earlier about the six month release model and how the rate of innovation doesn't change, it's just the rate of innovation delivery? I, I, I don't think your suggestion would have the effect that you want. Okay, so some concrete examples. So for example, uh, publishing the government board uh, minutes this always happens like uh, months before FOSDEM for the whole year. So that's actually not a good thing. I think they should really be published in a timely manner, like weeks after, the, after your meetings and not months or half a year later. That's one point. The so we, we, we have been working through, the, through, through that backlog. I think there are only a handful of, of meetings left. To get, to, to get through. So we'll get there. And, and I agree, they should be more timely, and I suspect everyone agrees they should be more timely. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Apart from anything else, we can't remember what it was we actually said when it comes to signing them off. Right. Oh, did I really say that two years ago? Maybe. Yeah, then, uh, submission forests are a great first step, but it's actually not submission forest, it's test forest. So we really need a way for external uh, committers to push hotspot state changes, which is still not possible? Um, actually, it is possible. Because, the, the, remember I, I, I said earlier that, uh, that internally at Oracle we, we replaced JPRT with Mach 5? Mach 5 doesn't do pushes either. So Oracle engineers can't even do it that way. But now that, now that we have the submission for us, you know, consult with your local hotspot uh, gatekeeper, uh, J Jesper or, or whomever, uh, but, but now we have that. If you if you are working on shared code, you run it through the, su the submission repo, test repo, maybe we should rename it, um, and all tests pass, you should be clear to push it. But yeah, the, the, uh, Jesper and I were chatting about this a couple, a couple of weeks ago. He, he plans to communicate this so that people understand. Vol oh, let, let the record show Volker, Volker only had two items on his list this year. <laughs> I'll take that as progress. I'm James Hunt. Um, I have two questions. One is, what about opening the TCK up to general usage? And two, I would like to understand what the, the, what the thoughts are going forward between the JCP and the Open JDK, JDK but governing board, how that, that relationship is going to move forward. George, you want to take the TCK I'll, one? I'll that's, take that's the second fun. one. I, I, my, my goal is to preserve the distance between the governing board and, and, and JCP to be as maximal as possible. Okay, I'm, I'm stepping further away from Heather. <laughs> The laptop is starting to glow with heat. <laughs> um, I'll try to answer both of these, and ho hopefully you can hear me. And if anyone wants to add, they're certainly welcome to. Um, on the uh, access to the TCK, I would point out that it is possible today um, for 
you to get access to the TCK through an agreement called the OCTLA. Um, and there are many people who have that in order to use the, to get access to the TCK and uh, test um, your own builds of OpenJDK. Now, I realize that's not the same thing as having uh, the TCK uh, in open source and in a place where everyone can easily contribute to it. Um, although we do have some very good examples of exactly that happening. Um, for instance, uh, with 310, the date and time JSR. Um, and, and so I, I think, you know, this is an area that probably will continue to evolve and we'll, we'll see what we get to on that. But, you know, I, I hope that that solution is as somewhat provisional as it is, um, you know, meets most people's needs for anything that is urgent at the moment. Um, the second thing regarding the JCP, um, hi, Heather, you're right in the middle of the screen. Um, you know, I, I would say that there's been a lot of very good work um, in the last year to basically find places where the JSR um, lifecycle and the JCP process um, had some impedance mismatches with the notion of doing six month releases. And the JCP EC has been very cooperative in, you know, agreeing that we share the same goal of making sure that the specification side of Java remains strong and that, um, you know, that we find ways of making the process um, fit with today's more rapid evolution cycles. And so there have been a bunch of changes that have reduced the amount of time and overhead in the process, which was, you know, initially described long before the code base for OpenJDK and, and thus the reference implementation was open source. Um, and where the initial goal was really to, you know, force all those evil vendors doing closed source stuff to be more transparent in uh, the design and implementation process. Um, and of course, you know, purely being open source helps to a great extent with that. Um, and, you know, it was, it was kind of high time that the JCP process be evolved to a point where it wasn't something that was holding, you know, slowing everything down. Um, so I think that cooperation is great and, you know, we'll, we'll see how that continues to, to evolve as, as we go forward. We're really, you know, with the first six month um, releases now, you know, trying to experience how that's working. And I think if we find places where there are issues, um, we're going to have cooperative partners in the JCPC to, uh, you know, continue to, uh, uh, to, to remove those impacts. Hey, George, I don't know if you've dropped or if you've finished. Um, just to kind of amplify George's comments, I think there's two examples there. So for the first question, we've certainly been working with the Adopt Project, the London Java community, to get TCK'd OpenJDK builds available to the community. And so as that project evolves, we have a, you know, a TCK available to that project, and we are now at the point, I think, where we have clean builds ready to be consumed. So that's kind of the first example of... George's comment that TCKs are available to community projects and people that need them. I think the second thing, I'm actually IBM's executive committee rep on the JCP, um, and certainly we have been working extremely hard to make sure that the processes and practices that we have at the JCP fit the new rapid cadence that we have on SE and the requirements that we have from the OpenJDK project in terms of getting you know, the, the specifications through the pipeline reviewed and commentary and the feedback cycle with the OpenJDK team tight. So it's been great to have George and Brian and others come to the JCP and explain what's happening in OpenJDK and how the JCP process can really help with you know, getting those specifications through. So I think there's good communication with all these things that can be better, but I think actually we've, we're off to a good start there and looking forward to seeing 10 come through you know, in quick succession, 11 and, and 12 and so on. So I think we're, we've started that improvement and I think there's always more we can do. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I couldn't even understand it, and I'm in the room. Could, could you make uh, pu publishing the re the re so so re remember that the results of a TCK run are a bit. It's a bit. You either pass or you don't. Yes. Yeah, so so from adopt, you know, if we're publishing a binary. 
and it says that it passes the TCK, then it would have passed, and so we won't publish anything because everything passed okay. When it fails, there's an internal team that have access to that repository because it is kept, obviously, sensitive to a certain subset of the community. Um, and so those people would be going through the failures and fixing any issues and resolving those until it passes, and at which time then no one needs to see the results. But, yeah, anyone who signs the agreement in that project can get access to that subset community that has access to the TCK and the results. Why, 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 is the, why is the TCK code sensitive? Um, there, there, there are mul multiple fairly deep answers to that question. Uh, one of, maybe one of the easiest ones to relate to is... You don't want to know. Sorry? You don't want to know. Yeah, you, well, you, well yeah, you, you, yeah. I could tell you, but then I have to kill you. Uh, no, seriously. Um, what, one very pragmatic point is we're talking about millions of lines of code that we would have to inspect and audit just to get it out there. So this is not a, this is not not something that you know I could just go to my laptop and do and you know stick it on stick it on the web and anybody can use it. Um, there are a bunch of long-standing, in some cases decades, business relationships you know initially established by Sun that have all kinds of confidentiality agreements that bear on what can be done by anybody with the TCK. Uh, so it's just it's just just hideously complex. Um, is this a problem that that ought to be solved someday? Yeah, personally, I think so, but you know, not speaking for Oracle, uh, is it something that we look at periodically as as the situation changes? Yes, it absolutely is, but it's not open source today, and I can guarantee it will not be open source tomorrow. Sorry. I do think you know the well, you, the, the specifications you are standard, and we want to make sure that that standard remains consistent. And so there, there are all sorts of elements that are you know. We don't want an open source project that then gets forked and then all sorts of complications that occur. So keeping it under some level of control is actually useful for maintaining the stability of the Java platform. I think there are all sorts of implications like that that, that run along. We're, we're aware of all the counter examples, really. Okay, I, I'm. I'm not sure it's it's to, useful to, to spend more time more on proactive this. Answer, to give a more proactive answer, you all can contribute open source TCKs. We're the poster child for that in Java Util Concurrent. All of our TCK tests are open source. They are imported straight into the um, the Oracle um, TCK. You can and should do the same with anything you do. Yeah. Um, so and Steve, Stephen Colbert did, this, did the same with JSR 310. Sorry. Problems, but you can do that. Um. Uh, no more about the TCK. Um, go on. Question, comment. I know it. it's probably not the right venue to ask the question, but I, uh, I personally, as an entity, I have access to the TCK. And so I'm on the mailing list when I see the communication between Red Hat and Oracle and IBM. So usually the way it goes is Red Hat says, oh, this test fails on JDK X. And then the answer from an Oracle engineer is usually, oh, yes, we forgot to exclude that one. <laughs> like literally 99.9% .9 of the cases. So. Can we trust the results, really, if you just exclude everything that doesn't work? You know, now, just imagine the, the, you know, the next scene of the film, big dark room, somebody's pouring over a printout of the entire TZK, and they realize, oh my gods, 99% of the tests are excluded. <laughs> And then it can be open. <laughs> uh, so ex ex excluding tests is is a very routine thing that we do in TCK development. Uh, excluding a dozen, uh, you know, several dozen tests in, in, during a feature release lifecycle uh, is, well, sorry, in a traditional multi-year feature release le release lifecycle is no big deal because in that, in that release lifecycle we probably added at least a half a million new ones. Um, so you know, what typically happens is there, there's a draft TCK, 
Um, you know, pe people get that, they, 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 they run that. You know, we run it on a bunch of different platforms internally, obviously. The partners run it, Red Hat runs it. Um, and results show up. And if you're a couple of months away from shipping the release, I remember the release per the JCP is the reference implementation and the spec and the TCK. Um, you know, the TCK is an engineered artifact, just like the JDK itself. It, you know, we, we have to be careful about it. We don't have time to go rewrite tests and then revalidate them. So what do you do? You exclude it, because the TCK has an exclude list for this very purpose. And one of the regular things that the developers of the TCK do uh, routinely after every feature release is go look at that exclude list and try to whittle it down, figure out, okay, are the, were those tests invalid, were they valid, do they need to be rewritten, and so forth. So it's a, it's a constant, it's like a sine wave that goes up and down with the release cycle. I do think we have a good test bed, though, looking at, you know, I know this is predominantly a, a Java SE conversation, but if we look at what's happening in the EE space with, you know, the movement of Java EE to Eclipse, all of the RI, the TCKs, and the movement of that project. I think if we can see how successful that is, then it gives us kind of a test bed for, okay, well, what would happen if we open sourced a large TCK test set? So. But I think Christian addressed a valid point uh, because we, we had this with, ja with Java 9. Oracle released Java 9, GA, and nobody else could really certify it because there were some tests which didn't pass. And because there is no public uh, 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 communication possible, you always have to, every single licensee has to go back to Oracle and ask what happens. And uh, it would be easier if it would be possible to communicate uh, publicly about these problems. Yes, I, I agree it would be easier. <laughs> <laughs> come down here. No, 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 please come down here. Um, the question about the TCK is, um, how is it updated? Is there a special team inside Oracle that reads the chaps and updates it, or how is it um, working? Are there also uh, the open source committers of OpenJDK involved, or is it a completely separate team? So or Oracle has an, has an entire internal team that develops the TCK. They don't write all of the tests, as, as Doug mentioned. Uh, some incoming projects have, have chosen to establish a tradition of providing their own. So all the Java util concurrent stuff, those tests are maintained by Doug and his collaborators outside. They're all marked, I, guess, I think they're public domain, right, Doug? Right. We just throw it over a wall. He, it they, they, they throw it over a wall, and, <laughs> and then somebody in the, in the Oracle TCK team takes them and regularly updates that that portion of the TCK test suite. Um, we also do, we, tweak, we took in the JSR 310 tests from Stephen Colborn. I'm, I'm not sure if there's still an, an open copy out, out there that's maintained, but I don't think they've, they've evolved much. They have evolved much in the meantime anyway. Um, but anyway, the, 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 the Oracle engineers who do this, this is their job. They're not also doing open JDK or VMwork or whatever. It, it, and it's, it's a fairly specialized kind of field. You need a fairly perverse mindset to go, you know, to sit there and, re and read through the most obscure corners of the JVMS and the J JLS and come up with new ways to, to beat on the system. But it's really good for quality control. Um, well, do you think the we other set of tests that are regularly done are the so-called JT reg tests. And they, they can be, they're allowed to be a complete overlap with the TCK test for all that it matters and those are those that process is a little more straightforward because every bug report has some tests and that test eventually gets itself into JT reg um, maybe by modifying another somehow or another makes it in and so many of the tests that aren't in that are in TCK are redundant with ones you run anyway that anyone I think can run. It's painful. You need, you need, if you ever want to do it, grab our ant script from WTIL concurrent and it will guide you through it. It's a little, a little weird. You have to get the, the, um, the, the right jar files corresponding to any particular edition, but you can run those yourself and you can get all, all the, everything you need to, to do it. 
Yeah, uh, it, just uh, for those who don't know, the JT rig, rig tests are open. They're they're in the repo along with all, all the code. So there's nothing nothing closed there. There there's a there's a, there's a small number of internal JT rig tests that that um, Oracle's going through and either throwing away or putting out uh, in into the open one. Yeah. Um, if there's no very strong objection, I'd love to move this on because we have the change to the release cadence, which is the most important thing that's happened this year and probably the most important thing that's happened for several years uh, in Open JDK land. And the people here, I would love to uh, get a little bit of feedback from you about how you think it's going. Um, my take on it, uh, the last few weeks have been pretty bumpy, um, particularly with JDK 9 and the way that the release happened and the way that it broke a couple of important targets and so on. And all of this is a consequence of the pace of change being a little bit frantic, in my opinion. And I think that uh, we can do better next time and we will probably figure out how to do better next time. Um, I was personally very supportive of the change to release cadence when it was first mentioned to me and I just thought, great, let's do it. Uh, the situation before was that if you were a student and you were doing something for Java for your uh, final year undergraduate project, you could probably have your PhD pretty much done by the time it actually appeared in Java. Uh, and clearly this wasn't any way to encourage people to contribute to OpenJDK. And this, I think, is much better. It's kind of hair-raising at the moment. I mean, no sooner do you think you're ready to put something in and they say, oh, well, it's frozen now. For what? I only started a couple of weeks ago. Um, but I think we'll all get used to it. I would love to hear any comments from anybody in the audience who's been affected by this, this change. Um, do you like it? Do you think it's better? Do you think it's worse? Uh, all comments welcome, including. <laughs> I can say a little bit about it. So at Twitter, we use obviously the JDK and, and we have the VM team and we build our own JDK so it affects us a lot. Um, our biggest discussion point is what are we doing? Are we going, it, it's mostly about security, right? Are we doing every six months the release or are we going with LTS? And then what happens if between the LTS releases a very important feature comes out that maybe our Scala developers want. What are we doing then? Are we taking that feature and backporting into our, the LTS, or are we then jumping forward to, to do the six? So th these are the problems we, we have. Um, so far, it looks like nobody wants to do the six months releases because it's, it's too fast for our users, let's call it this way. So we still don't know what to do. But you have a, you have a choice now you didn't have before. Yeah. Right. I mean, this, is a, this is a new choice. You... Right. Yeah. You, nothing has been lost. You've got something extra, right? Exactly. Yeah. And my take on that is that I think once we get the, the vulnerability group up and running, it'll feel quite different. Um, at the moment, the prospect of having to do urgent security backports to several live uh, short-term releases is, is quite terrifying, and I, I don't think we could do it. But I think, given the vulnerability group, we'll all have a bit more bandwidth to look at how many of these things are still out there, and particularly for Fedora, which has a slightly longer support uh, life cycle than the short-term Java releases, but not much. Uh, and we'll probably be able to keep those going, I think, if we have enough time to do it. At the moment, it's a matter of um, we only have a couple of weeks, really, to get everything backported and merged, and clearly we're not going to be able to do that with all the releases. Um, just to comment that 
it's a new choice and nothing's lost. I think people have got used to a pattern of behavior where there is a publicly available free Java version, in Java 8's case, four and a half, five years, that's available for download with regular security updates that they can rely on. I think in the new model, I think you described this morning a six month minimum in terms of source code security updates in OpenJDK and binaries that are available for these new releases. I think until we see who's going to step up in the community to have longer releases on the LTS, then I think there is still confusion and uncertainty about the guarantees for source code security updates and binary availability. And that's why we've invested in the ADOPT project to be able to describe our roadmap and plans of at least a four-year LTS to get people from one beginning of an LTS to the next with security updates. Yeah, my feeling is that it's very likely that something like that model will become more widespread generally and that there will be back ports for security updates for longer than three years. But these are early days. We're just dipping our toes in the water right now. Yeah, and as I was saying this morning, you know, the, the, these, are all, these are all lower bounds, right? Um, what, what happens in OpenJDK, nobody can, nobody can predict. And it's not, it, please, it's not just up to Oracle. So... To, to exactly that point, um, we, we are talking, Twitter, we are talking to Google and Alibaba and SAP as well. And I think what we should do is, I don't know about Red Hat, um, the six months releases that are not LTS releases, you know, sometimes we, we might have to pick up one just because. And it would be good if, if all non-Oracle companies who are heavily involved would pick that up and share the burden of backporting security patches and things like this. Wow. That's what the group is for. <laughs> Join us. That's what the group is for. Join us. Well, the, that's what the vulnerability group is to, get, is to share the information on the fixes and get them out there, there. And then there's the work of actually doing, uh, doing, the, doing the updates. And I think you know, part, some of the rough edges that Andrew mentioned that we're, we, we, you know, will no doubt iron out over time will allow for appropriate delegation within the, J the JDK updates project so you don't have to wait for some Oracle person to, to, to bless something anymore. Well, we want to be part of it, but it's not there yet. You know, we, we're talking to you and, you know, I think Volker has something to say about this. <laughs> well, I mean, that's exactly the point. Uh, I, I understand that Oracle doesn't want to commit to this, but at least it should make it possible for others to work on this, and it's currently not easy. The days one one JDK updates project, it's not release specific anymore. Oracle is leading this project, and I don't see from the from the how, how this is supposed to work. Like when you don't want to support Java 9 anymore, but there is no Java 9 updates project, it's not easy for others to step in. So how is this supposed to work? Is there a process change in in, in do you work on a process change, or what plans do you have here? I, I think that's still up for discussion. Um, I, 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 so the, 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 yes, so. I, 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 the, the co-maintainer of, of, of Java 2 uh, concurrent um, um, truly believes that we should have some nine update process for, for things that are too important not to do. Um, I believe the current status is that nobody's opposed to doing it and nobody wants to take control of it. Okay, so, so I, this, this morning I put up a slide and the last item on the slide was Oracle's, Oracle commits to ensuring smooth transitions. Uh, what, what does that mean exactly? Well, this is the thing that we're still trying to figure out, the thing that we didn't do so well a few months ago, so we'll do better next time. Uh, as, as to having, having the, the fact that there's one JDK updates project that was meant to be a feature so that we don't have to spin up a whole other project every six months, yeah. which would be a bunch of process overhead that, well, maybe a few people want, but I certainly don't. Um, the JDK, the, the earlier numbered JDK updates projects, eight and seven, and, and was, uh, was there one for six? I don't remember. Um, those projects established within themselves um, you know, simple rules for the project lead to delegate for a certain line to some other person in the project. There is absolutely no reason that cannot happen with the JDK, the, J, the general JDK updates project. 
Um, and I expect its project lead to propose something in due course along the, exactly those lines. We don't need a process change. We don't need uh, a new updates project every six months. This is, this is all pretty straightforward, I think. No, I think that's right. And the JDK9 update tree has not been made read-only. So uh, until we figure out exactly how to do it, which we should be able to do fairly quickly, I think, and, and possibly in a way that requires me to volunteer to be the project leader or something, um, then we'll be able to put changes back, I think. Um, but it doesn't, doesn't have to be a project. There only has to be a tree. It doesn't matter. So, uh, well, yeah. yeah. I, I love working on OpenJDK, but all this process stuff drives me completely crazy. <laughs> we will make the patches. We will fix the thing. Yeah. <laughs> this, 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 this isn't hard. This is not a hard problem to solve. So a comment on that. It's just an additional choice. Nothing went away. For us, what was impact us is that the short overlap of support period between 8 and 11. We have regulatory requirements that we can't run end of life software. Previously, we had like one day to migrate in production. Now we have four months. It's going to be tight. So, so for, for, from whom do you get your binaries? From, from Oracle, and, and how much do you pay for them? We looked at licensing, but the way... We looked at licensing from Oracle, but the way Oracle licensing works with VMs, that will bankrupt the company. There, 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 are, there are other vendors, and this is the free Java room, so we should probably not talk any more about Oracle contract pr practices. This is where I would say we've been working with the Adopt Project, London Java community, plenty of other partners on producing OpenJDK, with Hotspot and OpenJDK with Eclipse J9 binaries, and we're going to continue to provide security updates in those code streams. So certainly from a Java 8 perspective, we're looking for the next few years of having Java 8 binaries that people can rely on, and we'll do the same with 11, and we'll do the same with the LTS releases. So that, that's going to be our plan, is look at the Adopt project, and then you can consider that as a free source of Java binaries. That's a great thing to have that in Adopt OpenJDK, but what I want to avoid is to have security updates done in the Adopt OpenJDK project. They should be done upstream, and there should be a possibility That's to do that. Right. No, no. So, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, just, yeah, so what I'm saying is, you know, for, for Java 6, I know Azul is taking on that burden today of backporting. For Java 7, I believe, you know, Red Hat have got that responsibility. Mm -hmm. Java 8, I guess that, that code base won't come to the community until at least January 2019. Um, sorry, sorry. Oracle is part of the community. Okay. So Oracle won't look for the community to do the back. Oracle will not look for other contributors in the community to take on the burden of eight updates until yes. at least January 2019, if not later. Um, unfortunately, we are out of time. Sorry. Thank you for your questions and your comments.